So sometimes when I'm using features in my Tesla, I just take them for granted. Why? Well, a lot of them feel like common sense, but common sense ain't so common. And in the car industry, common sense is the furthest from what these companies use, apart from Tesla. In fact, Tesla has so much common sense that when they implement it, it feels like downright genius. Guys, if you could do me a massive favor, I'm really trying to step the game up on the quality of this content. Please go hit the like button. Let's see if we can hit 100 likes. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to do three videos a week at the moment, and at least one of them will be kind of like this. Take, for example, using a key card to open your car, or even better, your mobile phone. In the consumer electronics world, that's kind of standard. It already exists, it's not that groundbreaking. But if you then implement that into the car industry, it's absolutely game changing. And the thing is, when you own a Tesla, you expect no less. We take these things for granted because it's just what Tesla delivers. Tesla isn't a traditional auto company, they're more of a tech company. So when you step back into an older car, it feels like you're stepping back in time almost. Go back to 2010 and 2011 when Elon Musk was developing the Tesla Model S. He insisted about having this huge screen inside the car and all the parts suppliers in, at the time in the industry told him it's not possible, nothing like that exists. But Elon came from a tech background and he knew that there was laptop screens. He knew that the screens existed in the tech world. They just didn't exist in the auto world. Why couldn't these screens be used in cars? He profused that these screens are more than capable enough to work in cars. There's no problem with them and why they can't be implemented in cars. They could take a batter in, they could take a lot of usage, they could take a lot of heat. That It shouldn't be a problem. And to us, that seems like common sense. But the auto, to the auto industry, that was kind of weird at the time and they downright rejected it. Fortunately for us, Elon pressed on and actually got those screens passed through all the tests. It passed all the auto industry standards as he said it would. And now we have the advancement in these amazing screens like this one right here. That's only down to somebody going, hey, hold on a sec. This old industry way of doing things isn't right. And there's a, a new way to be doing it. And we don't have to go through the old procedures of past history. Common sense doesn't exist in the car world. In fact, the car world still works in the past. Why on earth does any car come out of a car factory with a screen like a calculator? Why does that happen? When Tesla have already shown the way and have already sort of set the bar, why are they still pumping cars out with calculator screens, basically? It's because dinosaurs take long to turn around. And that's what these legacy autos are. They're dinosaurs. They're old dinosaurs at this point. And if they're not careful, they'll soon be fossils. What, what sparked this video was the simplicity of Tesla's suspension. That was pretty much it. Something that I take for granted. The reason for that is just because it's implemented so smoothly and so seamlessly. When you realize what your car is doing, you go, oh, that makes sense. And it is such a simple and common sense thing. But in the car industry, that makes you a genius. It does, it makes you a genius. So let's have a look at the 2020 Tesla Model S and its air suspension. We can go into these settings here and go onto the adjustable air suspension, ignore my hands, and we can go from comfort, which we're in right now, which feels like you're a chauffeur, feels really smooth, would be fantastic for driving around the city or driving clients around, to sport in an instant. Now the car's in, in sport mode, the car sinks a little bit. The, sh the road responsiveness, you can feel the road a little bit more, which means it really does handle a lot better. You can handle corners a lot better. 
and it does. It feels amazing. At the switch of a button, you can do that. We can set the car quite easily into a low profile and a low stance. And even whilst we're driving, the car will sink down, which again, is amazing. And you really feel it. You really feel the car get lower. You feel like you're in a lower stance, which means you're gonna have better performance and you're gonna have better efficiency on highways. So currently the car is in the highest ride height and now I'm gonna put it into the low position. Press this button and down we go. Takes a while. There we go. Does, like I said, it shimmies from stage to stage. Sorry, that was me. I released the brake. Now we're in the low position. Let me measure that. So from the floor to the sill is 175 millimeters, 100 and, or 17 and a half centimeters. That's no problem. We get up to some bumpy roads or some road bumps and we literally just press the ride height to very high. As we are moving along, the car is raising the suspension up and you can feel it. You can hear it if you listen carefully. It shimmies backwards and forwards until you're in the high ride position, which you really do feel. You can feel a lot higher up. Your eye line is a lot higher up and it means it clears road bumps with ease. So the car in this position is obviously a lot higher. Let's uh, measure that up and see how high that actually is. Let's um, pop that back into the high position. 17 and a half centimeters, don't forget it. Okay, so now we're in the highest position. 220 mil. So, dinky little measurement doesn't seem like much. It really does make a huge difference when you're going over bumps. As you can see, in the low position, there's only just enough room. Very close to scraping it on the road bump. Let's try the high ride, ride position. There's probably another three or four inches of space in there. So pretty much the Tesla Model S can handle any road in the UK. I've had an idea. Now we've measured the ride height. Let's go outside and measure the height of William. And let's see if we can go over him in the high ride height position. This will be good. So here we are outside the car and we have William laying down on the floor. Now, if you remember the ride height position, I've got a tape measure with me. William is exactly 22 centimeters, just at this, at this section here. Uh, I'm roughly measuring because I know from before, I think the high ride position was around 30 centimeters. I forgot, but it was definitely over 23. Anyway. The low position I think was 17. So let's put the car in the high ride position and let's run, we'll be, not run him over, but quite literally just roll over the top of him. It's gonna be bang on. Right, Will, just stay there. Just keep your head down though, because I think if you put your head up, it might be, um, there might be an issue with your head up. Just stay flat, stay flat, stay flat. Don't worry, it's, it's definitely high enough. So now I'm putting the car into the high ride height position, okay? Right, Will, stay there, stay clear. Okay, so I think the best way to do this is probably to roll into it easy and then speed up quite fast because it's like ripping a band-aid off, isn't it? Oh, don't, um, don't try that at home, guys.
like that is the coolest thing. So cool, you might have actually just missed it. But don't worry, I take it for granted every single day. In fact, since the first day I noticed what the car was doing, I took it for granted. What happened was, is one day I was coming down this road which is littered with road bumps, which isn't uncommon in the UK. And I set the suspension to very high because these road bumps are quite severe. And ever since then, the car remembered the GPS location and sets the suspension into high ride position every single time. But since the first time I noticed this, I took it for granted. And that's what sparked me to make this video. I don't think people realize the common sense genius that Teslas are fitted with. The fact that my car knows after the first time I tell it to be in high suspension seems quite simple. It is quite simple, but nobody else is doing it. It's so simple that you take it for granted and you just get on with your day and you forget that your car does it. But the moment you're in, an old car, you realize how smart your car was. And that's why the saying goes, once you go Tesla, you never go back. And it's true, because I could not see it any other way. This is what I mean when I say Tesla has common sense, Tesla is genius. It's like when, when you're locked into a way of thinking, your builder tells you, this is the way you do a job. Your boss tells you, this is the way you do it. And you go, well, why? Why do you do it? Don't ask questions. This is just the way you do it. This is the way we've always done it. That's the car industry. There's always someone smart who comes along and finds out a faster and better way to do it. But at the moment in the car industry, everyone's got earplugs in, they're not listening. And that's why Tesla was able to come in and just sweep the rug from everybody. Just because I use the word common sense doesn't mean by any means that Tesla is common. It's not a common company. In the car industry, Tesla are geniuses, they are. But to be a genius in the car industry, it just takes common sense. That's all it does take at the moment. That's not to say that Tesla don't have genius. They do, with their full self-driving, that is genius. But some of these simple things from the outside just seem like common sense. When they tie them all together, it makes the perfect car. And that's how Tesla gained the biggest lead. It was all down to common sense. It genuinely was. Within two days of owning my Tesla, I already took for granted opening the car. I would walk up to the car and open it. Now, two days in, that's how intuitive what Tesla have designed is. The phone is a key. It's common sense that everyone f carries a phone around with them. It's then common sense to use that phone as a key. It's kind of, kind of a simple thing to think of. And it works so well and it's so flawless and it is so simple of an idea that us as consumers understand that and quite quickly take it for granted. Two days in, the fact that other car companies haven't even implemented this on mass scale yet, it's just baffling to me. It's like the smart kid in the class has all the answers to the pop quiz. And it's not that you're copying off him, it's that he's openly waving them in the air and saying, hey, here's all the answers to the test. Here is all the answers. And all the other car companies, the dumb car companies sat around the smart kid, probably we'll call him Elon or Tesla, are unable to even copy his answers because that's how stupid they are. They're not even copying the smart kid's answers that he's offering to everyone. That's how stupid the car industry is. There's so many features in the Tesla that I have not covered a fraction of them. So let me know in the comment section below, what is your favorite, simple, common sense, but genius feature of your Tesla that you like the most? Because I know there's so many things that you just don't get in other cars, which is kind of crazy. Maybe we'll start to see a change soon. I don't see it happening change soon, but let me know what's your favorite thing. Guys, thanks for sticking along. If we can have um, a few likes down below, please, uh, for William, rest in peace, um, or pieces, should we say, rest in pieces. You know, we've got to do whatever it takes for the, for the channel. So if you can get a like for that, and also if you like the content and the effort that we go to in this kind of, please subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate it, it goes a long way. If you're thinking about buying a Tesla, 
There's a link in the description. It's my referral code and it gets you a thousand free supercharging miles and it also gets me a thousand free supercharging miles. It helps support the channel. So if you did find any value today, please go use that. As always guys, you've been wonderful and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. William's still alive, don't worry. I'm good. I'm good, I'm good guys. <laughs> it was just a bit. It was just a bit. Anyway. This was for the tiniest little bit. I was gonna do some blood draining away and the paint exploded in the car. Luckily, it only went in my bag and there's none in the Tesla. But uh, yeah, fail, big fail. So if I had red hands in any of the video or red paint on my hands, it's because I couldn't get it bloody off. It's properly on there. Guys, if you appreciate the effort we go to in these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. I've now got spray paint all over my hands. Why did I use this paint and not fake blood?